गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम टू द वीकली शो विद आदित्य इंडिया नंबर वन पॉडकास्ट विद इंडिया नंबर वन होस्ट आदित्य इन एसोसिएशन विद दूसरा डॉट नेट नंबर वन वेबसाइट इन स्पोर्ट्स एजुकेशन एंड एंटरटेनमेंट This is episode twenty-eight. It's the first of February, two thousand nineteen. Let's talk about India's performance in the fourth ODI against New Zealand. Should we call that complacency? Should we say that they lost momentum? And does it mean that the absence of Dhoni and Kohli makes this team weak? Well these are certainly the rumors flying around when it comes to India's performance when they were bowled out for 92 yesterday but I disagree I wholeheartedly disagree with those who are floating around these theories no the performance was not complacent yes they lost the match but in the hindsight they had already won the series so a couple of performances where they do not live up to the expectations or do not go 4-0 up is not much of a burden these things can happen we lost wickets at regular intervals our number 4 5 6 7 were a little scratchy and they were in a hurry rohit and dhawan then get india off to that start which one expects therefore the first odi against australia when india were 4 for 3 and then they lost only by 34 runs a match one expected india could have lost by 200 runs they could have been bowled for 90 in that match but no dhoni prevented that from happening but dhoni was not present here there is no point going into the past one thinks that kartik is a good player and the media thought that dhoni should go well dhoni wasn't playing so let's suppose that he was not there and then we collapsed should we we have done better yes we should have done better we should have been smarter but fine one performance where we get out for 90 and the team doesn't live up to the expectations that's what the sport is all about rafael nadal lost to djokovic who knew he would lose one thought that nadal would overpower djokovic but the opposite happened nobody expected djokovic to win but nadal won and then you weren't expecting new zealand to just be lying around and say okay we lost the series 3-0 so let's make it 4-0 well trent bolt had other ideas india had won the series dhoni was still under a bit of injury cloud one doesn't know what happened or the thought and let's continue with giving karthik another chance so they continued with that combination shubman gill came into the team it was a brilliant decision if they wanted to drop someone it should have been shikhar dhawan it seems as if the women's team has taken the clue from the men's team and the situation is reversed here as well the likes of smriti mandana and jemima rodriguez couldn't get going today and india were bowled out of 150 slightly better than the men's performance of 90 odd now the women's team is going to win the series 2-1 and the men's team most likely will win the series 4 one the australia sri lanka match australia certainly seem to have brush off the ghost of the india australia series and now they are taking advantage of sri lanka to take the series to zero now let's look at this performance 30 for 3 for 3 and now they are 324 for 3 with joe bones and travis head at 147 and 151 respectively travis head who was labeled as a one day player has now evolved into a valuable test batsman this match is now akin to that famous kolkata test between india and australia when when dravid and lakshman had that partnership of 376 it seems this partnership of 300 is certainly going to revive australian cricket and that middle order now looks more secure is the sri lankan bowling weak no they have a world class attack let's just say that the wicket to bat on is good they are going at over 4 runs per per over and most likely they will end up between 420 and 430 and if this partnership continues 
it will go into the record books the and it has been a stupendous performance joe burns who is now certainly burning the town seems to have put rest to the opening slot well he could have been brought back in the india series but that's in the past and along with travis head have secured their slots for the ashes series even if warner and smith return i would put head and burns in their respective slots there is an article in the newspaper that dravid proposes a plan to facilitate alternate careers for young cricketers while this is a very noble idea why are we limiting it to only cricketers why not taking it across to all sports knowing that cricketers often are paid more than other sports persons from other sports who struggle after they retire they're not able to make a living therefore this idea should be taken up by the sports authority and various sporting organizations and everyone should think together that what are the viable opportunities for sports person post retirement one of them is obviously commentary but not everyone will want to go into commentary well people like gambhir and robin uttappa were certainly lucky to get a commentary slot during the one day and the t20 series though they were not impressive but they certainly were lucky to even be there for those six matches but not everyone wants to go for commentary there has to be an alternate option the idea is that they can become sports psychologists they can be trained for being coaches there is an option to become an umpire match referee if they want to keep up with the sport if they want to go away from the sport they can certainly just as they do in the army they can go for various disciplines like mba or any other discipline which they can do with correspondence and can have an alternative career is the internet as addictive as drugs like opiates marijuana heroin that's a subjective point well are we addicted yes addiction is subjective one person addiction is other person's passion it is a catch 22 situation on one hand we want everyone to go paperless to save the environment and so that trees are not cut on the other hand we don't want people to be stuck on the computer for too long so it is about striking the right balance yes use internet but internet can not only be used for entertainment but also for education and then education can also come from books so if we don't want teenagers to use too much of internet or video games then we should encourage them to read books go out meet people but in this environment we do not trust our children to go out alone because parents fear that children might get hurt if they go outside so it is about striking the right balance and video games are not at all addictive and bad for health they have some learning elements it's up to us if we spend video game on 20 minutes or 20 hours it's our own maturity which will allow us one has been playing video games from time in memorial be it the 70s 80s 90s or or in the last 10 years video games have always been in vogue it is just now that we feel a sudden concern that people are spending too much time on this well there could be a lot of other reasons it is not at all surprising that de addiction centers for internet and video games would come up just like we've had one for alcohol and drugs and some for overeating it's all about maturity and we need to think for ourselves that how much of this should we do thank you for listening to this episode stay tuned for another dynamic episode